Welcome back to another episode of Enigmatica 6 Expert. That is probably too big of a pile of uh, storage drawers for one storage drawer controller to work with. Uh, but just from when I'm placing them, like this, like these spruce logs, like they don't need to be in there. That That's just one of them. So we'll probably be getting rid of quite a few of these. Um, yeah, when they're only like, when they're less than a stack, they definitely don't need their own drawer. Um, so we should be able to whittle this down quite a bit. Uh, when it comes time to actually hook in the storage drawer controller and try and connect it to our refined storage system. Just the reason all of our storage drawers are over here is because in between episodes I have been moving all of my storage uh, into the system. So yeah. Uh, I had to put more obsidian chests, uh, so more external storage. What are those things called? Uh, external storages, external storage interface things. Um, so this is now using 1,054 RF attack. And actually, I've just realized that is more than we're making. <laughs> uh, so we we need some more. We need some more of these things. And it's way easier with a refined storage system. Uh, no more requesting stuff. Let me just do that. And now he's making 200 and boom. And power's going up. Nice. Uh, we still need to make some more of more of these things, which I, I don't know if we got the stuff for that in here or not. No, we're missing fluid cells, which is missing fluid cell frames. I mean... It's not that's significantly better than uh, what I have been doing. So that takes it from 200 to 320. Nice, we've got a leftover, leftover one of these. So, power crisis averted. Uh, I suspect we're probably doing fine on blaze fluid. It is starting to go down, although I think that was just because we put that uh, integral component, which increases how much how much fluid it can hold. Uh, bearing in mind, we can still put sugar and spider eyes on the spawner to increase the rate of, of spawns. So, yeah, I don't think we really got a problem with blazing blood yet. Yeah, if we come over to the house, uh, that simple storage system, whatever it was called, pretty pipe storage system is gone. Uh, there's still a little bit of stuff to move over. Admittedly, some of it is a lot of stuff, uh, but we're gonna we're gonna start by finally making uh, this draw controller. So the main thing I was missing, like we've had all of this stuff, I possibly have all of these things. Uh, omnidirectional hoppers are oh, they're really simple. It's mostly this machine frame, and we whipped up. All of these assembly things last episode. Uh, so we can now start going through the process of creating these things. Which, yeah, right. <laughs> a little bit of a, a little bit of a process, but it shouldn't actually be too major. Now we're gonna wanna move, I think, all of this stuff. <laughs> over to the factory uh, because we're going to want to be able to automate it. But if we wanted to make this machine frame now, I possibly need chests um, so that you can have an input output chest. Uh, so that's a IO import, that's a IO export. If we put these two in here and we put in the drill program. Problems needs at least 3.5 bar. Well. So is enough pressure. Assembly IO unit export. Is that not this? 
ensure there is only one assembly platform. Okay. Uh, let's put the export. Looks like it's already starting. So we only need one of these. That's cool. And this is pretty slow. <laughs> uh, but I think that's probably because we don't have speed upgrades in anything yet. That does seem unnecessarily slow. But hey, a rough machine frame top. And that needs a thermonumetic thermo pneumatic processor with molten plastic. So we have a thermonumetic processor with nothing. And you needed one bucket of plastic. Required temperature. 1600. Oh, that is um, a lot. I don't know if we can get that high. That is an awful lot. Um, so that's the wrong way. Can we rotate this with. Is it this? Anybody reach? I think this breaks stuff though. There we go. So you've got no pressure in you. There we go. Now I'd almost say I doubt that this guy is going to get hot enough. Can he have, he can have that on you. Uh, like even if we, Oh dear, not whatever I just did. Even if we... So that's at like the maximum pressure. It can't keep up. Ah, interesting, okay. So blocks that generate heat, I need to do a little bit of looking into how we can get a, a, an extremely high temperature. So it seems like uh, Blaze Blood works pretty good. It does eventually turn into Obsidian, but we're sitting at 771, so it's not enough. But that's just one lot of Blaze Blood, so we can use heat pipes. Um, I'm also not insulating any of the faces of this machine. Oh, that's worked quite a bit. I think Blaze Blood is going to be the go. Oh, we haven't got any air pressure, which is going to be an issue. But that's pretty good. Yeah, and then that happens eventually. But I reckon if we completely surround this guy as much as we can with blaze blood, that might give us enough. Okay, so I'm going to put a blaze lantern underneath just because it'll be annoying to keep putting blaze blood under there. But then if we chuck this dude here, he's going to get the base heat from the blaze lantern, which I don't think is going to get converted into something else. Um, I'm going to try plug that heat sink because I think that'll help. Cool. So the hot side there, heat sink here, which may help. Um, and then we're going to want to connect all of this. Yeah, go on the top. Yeah, can't go on the top. That's an issue. Okay. Yeah, air has to go there. All right. Heat sink. That's going to need compressed air. We'll come along here so that we're not. Yeah, I think if we put blaze blood everywhere around this, it should be good. Um, let's grab this dude. Yeah, 
and if we came along. It's hopefully going to help bring that temperature up. Don't know if that's going to do anything. Oh, we probably want... There we go. Fully surrounded by a place flood. Insulation might have been a better choice there. But this temperature's coming up. We're not quite making it. And these guys can't make any more pressure. Hmm. Okay. What if we had blaze blood there as well? Something just turned to obsidian. Okay, so we're doing some experimenting out here. So I did a little bit of research into like the heat mechanics of uh, Pneumatocraft. And these are, so I've got this heat pipe running out and then we're just going into blocks of compressed iron, which are good at transferring heat, I think. So that's going to be on the cold side of the vortex tube. Uh, and that means, so I think what could have been happening before is we just had the single heat sink and if that gets too hot, I don't think the vortex tube can create as much of a temperature difference. So this will hope, so this will hopefully enable us to get even hotter. We're almost at 600 and I haven't even put blazing fluid around this yet. Um, I wonder if we are meant to work on that advanced generator. Because I'm really struggling to get a high enough temperature. 1600. Uh, were there, was there anything written in this? Not really anything written in this quest. Okay, so just jumped on the Enigmatica 6 Discord. Just have a look, because I figured somebody else would have had the same problem. And yes, very much so. So apparently the thing we want to make is a fuel wood heater from Mechanism. Um, and this is not too bad to make, uh, unless we have to make some kiln bricks, which I think I've got some left over. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but yes, if we make a fuel wood heater, this makes a machine that is capable of producing large quantities of heat energy by burning combustible items. So Mechanism also has heat, uh, which I've actually never played around with. I'm not sure how Mechanism's heat works. I'm hoping we just happen to have a few kiln bricks left, so we don't have to go away and uh, create them. We do. All we're missing is a machine frame. Nice. And I think this runs on anything, like any sort of fuel. Um, I don't know if there's a quest I missed that explained that you needed this. Uh, I couldn't really see it in the expert quest line, but it doesn't necessarily mean anything. So if we were to put this, I, I guess we put it like here. Now the temperature is in Kelvin. It appears to be making heat without doing anything. Uh, let's put some stuff in there. And yes, that is that is making some heat. We are, of course, missing our insulation on all the other faces, so that's not going to be helping the situation. Okay. This guy just keeps going up in heat value, so this might be the ticket. Oh, we're already at 1900 heat. Well, ah, we don't have enough pressure. <laughs> okay. That should get us enough pressure, and uh, that was actually really easily. Should get us enough pressure eventually. And that was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. There we go. Nice. 
a coated machine frame top. Well, that was uh, that was a little bit of a <laughs> bit of a sidetrack. Cool. Uh, so once we've got that, uh, it's these two, the machine base we've made, that we've made, invar plates, heated with a blaze burner, gets us a rough machine frame. And then we should just be able to get this machine frame. And I need to tidy up my inventory. That is atrocious. But uh, yeah, let's let's do that. All right, so uh, set it up over here uh, in preparation for the fact that we probably want to be pressing concrete out. Uh, not right now, but eventually we're going to want to do that. So we'll do this manually here for now. So those things plus some fuel. Uh, two invar plates. Two invar plates. Actually, I set up a waystone so that I don't have to walk all the way back. And we got some plates over here. Oh, you've stopped. There we go. <laughs> a rough machine frame. Awesome. And now we want to pop back over to this, and I should have taken the waste out. And all going well. Uh, this thing needed... This thing needed the laser program. This is drill and laser. I don't know if you can interchange them like that. And this is going to get us our first machine frame. Boy, this thing's slow. And it's also not hooked up to pressure anymore. That's going to become an issue. I feel like the laser is not... Not doing the thing. Maybe we do have to swap the laser around. There we go. Okay. So maybe it needs to be like surrounded like that. And then that way you can either drill or laser. Because that's apparently doing some lasering. <laughs> machine frame! <sighs> one machine frame. We are going to want a lot more than just one. Uh, so there is going to have to be some automation set up. Uh, in the near future, I would imagine. Uh, let's just put some of the stuff in here for now. And let's see if we can get... Alright, so let's get rid of all these things. Just so you can see, all we're missing is this processor. So we need some of these logic units. We're out of... Treated wood. We're out of circuit backplanes. Uh, we're missing a reinforced chest. Missing a reinforced wall. There's another one of them. So all we're missing is some treated wood and these circuit back planes, which I think I have. Some insulated glass. Some copper plates, unfortunately. This is back at the starter base. Starter house. Just get a few of them. That should get us two of them. And then hey, that's that's almost that, isn't it? Gets us this processor, which is a quest. Um executes programs for automation. Programs should be written on a program card and can be made with the programmer block. I have never used that, so I'm not entirely sure what that's all about, but a troll controller. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that is nice. Um, just looking at quests, uh, just in case we get some handy storage rewards. Like at the C3, pedestal area four. Uh, pedestals might be something we want to check out, but not right now. So we got the draw controller. I also want to get a key if I can, I can. Uh, and I mostly want to get this to see... Oh. 
to see how many drawers we can connect to one storage drawer controller. So the center of this thing is this guy. Now I think drawer controllers can connect to drawers below them. We should find out if we lock it. That is connected to every single one. Brilliant. Cool. Oh, that is, that is sweet. And then if we were to hook a refined storage cable onto that. Oh, oh where do we put that? <laughs> where do we put that? Um, I think, I think we put that underground under the blaze place. Oh, that is pretty wide. Uh, or we move our refined storage up here because uh, we want to I don't know we want to be able to access it from like a central place and this could be like we run over here uh, we can access all of our storage this can be underground we don't need to see this and it even I think it can get a bit laggy with uh, displaying all these items yeah yeah but uh oh that is awesome a draw controller and done <laughs> Uh, there was totally unnecessary double handling in here uh, because I had to move everything that I'd spent a lot of time transporting over to the blaze thing over to this, but uh, the waystone made it a bit easier. So we've got access to all of our stuff here. Um, we've probably got a few more of these things than we really need and like things that take up heaps of room, like all of these. These should probably go in a drawer. Um, it's gonna, you know, free up a bunch of stuff. I have the priority set uh, to nine on this, so things should go into this drawer first. If there's a drawer for it and there's room, it'll go in here. Otherwise, yeah, it ends up in these drawers, which I think there's there's like dirt in here because our dirt drawer. You just have to take my word for it. It's 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 full. It's got like 2048 whatever it is. So uh, it took a bit longer than I expected, which is a bit of a theme with this pack, but we now have a draw controller and our storage is kind of set up. Uh, storage drives would be nice, but I think we're quite a wee way away from that. But uh, anyhow, it's been classic stuff. Thanks for watching. We'll come back next time. And I think we're almost on to like the last quest of the second tech chapter. Pretty sweet. See you guys.